internship opportunities. I so submit. Ms. Nixie Lam. Thank you, President. Uh, this motion is especially important to our future. Our education is very important to the next generation. It acts as a strong foundation for our future development. In the policy address, it is mentioned that uh, we should use well our education advantage. But how can we actually uh, bring in education resources? As Mr. So said just now, uh, due to external factors, uh, we have seen a decrease in the number of uh, students in Hong Kong. And many have suggested that we should consider opening up a quota for, uh, stu for non-local students. At the same time, uh, through providing um, um, eligible parents with visas to uh, come accompany their children, um, uh, such as, as parents with uh, special qualifications. Uh, this can also be beneficial to the Hong Kong community. To become an international education hub, we must ensure that our talents after being trained in Hong Kong could be or could stay in the Greater Bay Area or in Hong Kong. Uh, we see that there is a lack of, pro a lack of professionals in many industries, uh, such as arts experts. Um, it seems that, and for virtual assets management, it seems that uh, we lack such talents. We actually lack a uh, lack planning in this. We have to ask ourselves, what kind of talents do we need in Hong Kong in the future? What sort of conditions must be met to become a GBA talent? Well, if we can look at this from a scientific perspective, we have to understand our future job market. What kind of talents do we need? For example, um, in the uh, manpower um, Institute on the mainland is already looking into uh, new professions, and 429 professions have already applied. And after registration, after being assessed by um, experts, and to and after listening to public views, then there will be new professions, uh, such as. Um, uh, smart manufacturing or um, some sort of IT industries that are to be considered as new industries. By 2025, these new emerging industry experts would see a need of around uh, 300 people. And so we would actually need a logistics management and also um, e-sports uh, experts, we're talking about a lack of 1,000 such talents. Well, at the moment, uh, we have seen these new professions being put into categories. Well, with uh, digital development, then we will need to use um, voice uh, clips, uh, big data to provide analytics to open up new professions. Well, looking back at ourselves, have we done such in-depth uh, research? Well, right now, um, people are being asked to submit a new profession so that it would better help them arrange for what is to be needed in the future. Can our higher education uh, do the same? Are we well equipped to train such talents? Otherwise, why? How could we say that we are building an international education hub? If we could set out to resolve the issues that I've just raised, then we can tell other developed countries nearby that it is quite advantageous for their students to come study in Hong Kong. Well, as long as we have the competency and with some packaging, then we'll be able to attract students to come into Hong Kong. Well, when is the most appropriate time? I think that we should be well equipped to do this at any time. I saw a submit. Mr. Ambrose Slam, President, education is important to any place, including Hong Kong. Education hinges on whether a place can have sufficient talents. We need talents to support future development. 
The education sector in Hong Kong faces a real problem. We are short of students. There will be a decline in student population. Some kindergartens will cease operation because of that. The problem will stem. Uh, and spread to primary and secondary schools. There are 20 degree awarding higher education institutions in Hong Kong. If we don't get prepared in the future, the universities will fold up as well. I support Mr. Tang Fei's original motion of building Hong Kong into an international education hub by formulating a comprehensive strategic development blueprint so that we can attract overseas talents to come and study and more importantly to stay in Hong Kong. We need to make education an industry. Education is not just about training students. We also need to be mindful about their development opportunities. I take Canada as an example. Every year, we have three law schools training um, a cohort of students, uh, but only half of them will qualify as lawyers eventually. Now, these students will need to take PCLL in order to be qualified. PCLL only offers half um, the, half of the number of, of law graduates, um, half of the places for the law graduates. Now we want law students to be able to become lawyers. If well, for a poor performing student who are who is unable to become a lawyer, eventually it's his own fault. But we know that at least half of the law graduates won't be able to be qualified, and that's a systemic problem. In December 2022, I uh, made this proposal in the council that a um, the there should be a reform of the PCLL uh, exam. The secretary for justice uh, gave an undertaking, and so far, uh, the government is silent of the matter. We are uh, we adopt the common law system in. Uh, Around the world, for the aviation, maritime sec sector, uh, the common law prevails. So, with social development, advancement of technology, undergraduates of law schools are only skimming the surface. They are equipped with general knowledge, but not the specialized. Um, professional knowledge. They should do so. That means, uh, apart from taking a uh, reading law, they should also take up other subjects such as construction, commerce, and trade, etc., so that we can groom um, students to be lawyers with different specialties to support the development. I hope the relevant law schools can run um, these courses. I also agree with Professor Priscilla Leung that, that we should set up the International Legal Talents Training Academy in Hong Kong as quickly as possible so as to groom international ta uh, legal talents um, with expertise in common law. We can encourage more students from common law jurisdictions to receive training here. Uh, I learned from the policy address that there are measures to attract non-local students to come and study in Hong Kong. This is the right way to go for non-local students. They fund their own education. They also drive other economic activities uh, as they stay. Uh, and study here. I so submit. I support the motion and the amendments. Mr. Lam Chen Singh, thank you, President. I thank Mr. Tang Fei for moving this motion. Technology is constantly evolving. VPAT is playing an ever more important role in providing the necessary talents uh, to support different sectors. I support Mr. Stanley Ng's amendment. We need to raise the status of VPAT uh, so that we can build Hong Kong into an international VPAT hub. Now take UK as an example. In 2015, UK rolled out a degree awarding apprenticeship scheme. Upon completion of the scheme, an apprentice would be awarded with a degree. The scheme covers different disciplines such as construction, healthcare. The apprenticeship scheme 
covers a great diversity of courses. According to the Education Authority in the UK, between 2016-17, 1,600 plus students joined this scheme. Two years later, over 13,000 students joined the scheme. That shows how popular that scheme is. In Hong Kong, we have a um, vocational apprenticeship scheme, but uh, a graduating apprentice is only awarded a high diploma at most. I think we can explore this UK approach and consider a um, degree awarding apprenticeship scheme so as to provide more uh, attractive pathways so that we lay a good foundation for building Hong Kong into an international VPAT hub. Um, the policy address last year also suggests um, set establishing University of Applied Sciences in Hong Kong so as to raise the status and recognition of VPAT in Hong Kong. UAS is something new. So the government should set up a fund for the purpose of setting up UAS, Universities of Applied Sciences. There should be collaboration with different sectors so as to promote the long-term and sustainable development of VPAT. Different subsidy schemes should be covered by the fund to provide financial support to universities or to, to institutions um, which are interested in converting into UAS. There should also be collaboration with overseas counterparts so as to enhance mutual recognition of qualifications. Scholarships should be provided to provide bursaries and subsidies to students of disciplines um, needed by specific sectors. Last year, the government rolled out a vocational professionals admission scheme. Non-local students of designated full-time professional high diploma programs of v the VTC will be allowed to stay in Hong Kong for one year to seek jobs in their relevant fields. I think this can help attract more students to come and take up VPAT courses and seek jobs to promote VPET's development. The government should also closely monitor the implementation of the scheme, for example, whether the jobs are related to their studies and whether this will uh, eat into the opportunities for local students and their uh, remuneration. After all, the objective of the scheme is to attract non-local students to take vocational courses in Hong Kong so as to raise the status of VPAT in Hong Kong and in the world. It is not for the purpose of uh, deterring local students from taking VPAT courses. I so submit Mr. Shang Hai Long. Thank you, President. I speak in support of Mr. Tang Fei's motion and the amendments moved by five members. In order to build Hong Kong into an international education hub, we should be mindful about three things. First, we should give play to our traditional advantages. Second, we should um, strike a balance between academic pursuits and research and development. Third, we should extensively groom talents. I think the government should uh, make investments in these three areas. Now we should consolidate our advantage and leverage on our advantages. For I think we enjoy two advantages. First, we uh, a cultural melting pot where the East meets the West. We have the international um, vision. All along, we enjoy good reputation. Our soft power is widely recognized. Um, our universities have good R&D capabilities. We have five universities in the world top 100, and this is proof. 
um, somebody told me that after 1997, will universities in Hong Kong continue to adopt English as the MOI, medium of instruction? It's been 30 years since 1997. We continue to adopt English as the medium of instruction in universities. This is what it means to be an international city. We should continue to leverage on our advantages and uh, continue to be an international city. 70% of parents of um, incoming talents appreciate the um, culture, the nature of Hong Kong being a cultural, cultural melting uh, pot. Uh, we should also be accustomed to the new norm of um, industry uh, and research collaboration. Now, we in the past. Uh, it's more desk bound research. Now we emphasize commercialization of research outcome in order to enhance uh, this collaboration and strike a balance. Universities should adjust their policies and strategies. The government should also provide resources to support that. This is the new norm. Uh, both inside and outside of school campus campuses, such as uh, ChatGPT and other forms of technologies, they originate from um, the industries, not from universities. This may pose a challenge to the traditional mode of education, but I'd rather I say that this is rather a repositioning. We need to have new thinking. The third point is that after all, we need to uh, be able to attract talents from around the world. We need quality uh, ta talents. We also need um, innovative and esteemed scholars from around the world. This is how we promote internationalization of universities. And it is crucial in building Hong Kong into an international education hub. We should tell good stories of Hong Kong. We should promote Hong Kong. For example, uh, research students are mostly um, non-local students. For K-15 education, uh, the talent admission schemes have brought in a lot of K-15 students and more will be coming. Their families will also uh, come and stay in Hong Kong. We, it is also important to not just to attract the students to come, but to keep them here. There should be a mutual recognition of sub-degree programs in Hong Kong with the mainland. Well, uh, this is a grand vision to build Hong Kong into an international education hub. In order to integrate into the country's development plan, we need to build Hong Kong into the eight centers. Now, international education hub is not the ninth center because it is, after all, the foundation for building the eight centers. I so submit I support Mr. Tang Fei's motion and the five amendments. Dr. Tan Yuhang. Thank you. I support Mr. Tang Fei's motion and all the amendments. For a long time, Hong Kong has been a regional education center. Hong Kong is a regional leader in education in, lead in Asia. We also have the edge of having our country support and global connections. We have what it takes to become a global education hub. There are other global education hubs. Those places focus on not just universities. They also offer support for day-to-day -day life for visa students. Those places have holistic plans. Education is a way for them to attract talent. So they get the people and talent. And this is where Hong Kong needs to work hard. The government needs to work with the community. More proactive action is needed. 
we need to make education an industry to pursue long-term development. Here are some thoughts. First, we need to get the top-level design and overall planning right for an international tertiary education hub. This is a long-term and comprehensive strategy. Let's look at our medium to long-term manpower needs and also the structure of our tertiary education. We need to study the area. We also need a detailed blueprint. Let's look at different areas, fields. Tertiary education also requires support from primary and secondary education. In resource allocation, the government needs to show foresight. We need to review our education system. Primary and secondary schools need to get involved. They need to work with universities so that our basic education can transition smoothly into university education. We need to get this foundation right before we can become a tertiary education hub. Another point it has to do with raising our academic standards. To get visa students who come here, academic standards programs and the status of universities matter. We need to ensure teaching quality. We also need to raise the non-local student quota at all universities, not just the UGC-funded universities. Let's encourage universities to run more international internationalized programs. Let's offer double degree programs, international partnerships, and other forms of collaboration for students. The government should consider giving more resources to universities to improve hostels and other facilities. Let's have more academic buildings and hostels. Public-private partnerships can also be considered to improve facilities and expand universities' capacity. We need to step up international recruitment of students so that we bring in students from different places. Recruitment is a critical part of the process. We need to establish a brand for our education. We need to bring the education sector together. The government needs to help universities recruit students from places like Asia and the Belt and Road countries. We need recruitment strategies and promotion. Let's have overseas recruitment events, international expos and exchanges between sister institutions. Let's get more visa students to come here. Local universities should also learn from the popular destinations for overseas studies. We can work with agencies so that we can have a global network in our recruitment drive. Thank you, President. I support the motion and the amendments. Ms. Chen Yutming. Thank you, President. I support Mr. Tang Fei's motion on actively building Hong Kong into an international education hub by formulating a comprehensive strategic development blueprint for Hong Kong's education. I also support the amendments. As the motion argues, our country is trying to open up its education so that it becomes a key education center. The policy addressed this year proposes a timely measure, and this is to turn Hong Kong into an international tertiary education center. One measure is to raise the non-local student quota to 40%. We need to attract more non-local students to Hong Kong. The northern metropolis will cover tertiary education. There will be a university town. The motion proposes a comprehensive development blueprint. We can learn from other places on this front. We need to leverage our edge 
as an internationalized city. This can help raise our profile and also help develop China's brand as an education center. We can also turn tertiary education into an industry. This can help address our over-reliance on a few industries. This can bring economic benefits. Let's look at the UK. In 2020, Higher education generated more than £40 billion for the UK economy. Most of that money came from international students. In Australia, they saw $25.5 billion Australian dollars in returns from visa students. Global economy is struggling. Here in Hong Kong, we see more than $100 billion in deficit. The deficit looks like to stay. We need to generate new revenue. Developing into an international tertiary hub will be one way to help our economy. This is in line with the government's goal of raising more revenue. Turning Hong Kong into an education hub is also in line with our talent attraction strategy. Under the 14th five-year plan, Hong Kong should develop into eight centers. We have an aging population. There is structural shrinkage in our workforce. Becoming an international education hub can help ensure the supply of human resources. We can nurture more talent, people who love Hong Kong. Now for the northern metropolis, there will be a university town. Last week, I moved a motion on the northern metropolis. Some amendments touched on the university town. They would like the university town to support the INT in the area. Now we can learn from overseas experience. Let's give a sight to universities. The policy addressed last year proposes measures on hostels to meet students' needs. We need to help visa students navigate life in the city. Let's look at the mainland. They have their own university towns. They achieve a cluster effect. More businesses set up a presence there and offer better support for the students there. This can lower the cost of living and other forms of cost. To do for that, I will keep paying attention to this kind of model to see if it works for the northern metropolis. I will also be watching which model works best. I thank you. I so submit. Mr. Chen Pulen. Thank you, President. In the Chief Executive's policy address last year, it is said that Hong Kong should be developed into a post secondary education hub to attract more talents to come to Hong Kong. The Times Higher Education Rankings says that five of Hong Kong's top universities are in that. Four of them are in top ten, and the Hong Kong U is still the first. Hong Kong has top quality research talent in science and technology, and many non-local students have come to study in Hong Kong. In order to develop Hong Kong into a post-secondary education hub, it is important to have the right teaching expertise. In the 2024-25 academic year, the non-local student quota has doubled from 20% to 40%. In future, there should be more non-local students studying in Hong Kong. But when we look at recent figures, Mainland students account for 70% of the number of students, and there is a 5% increase in the past four years. And the other students from other regions account for 25%, and the, there is no significant increase in recent years. I think there should be a better balance or ratio in the nationalities of students and teachers. But in recent years, there are less students and teachers from the US and Europe. 
we have set up the Belt and Road Scholarship to attract more students from Belt and Road countries to study in Hong Kong. And the number of places has increased by 50% to 400. It is believed that more Belt and Road country students will come to Hong Kong to study. While trying to attract those from the mainland and Belt and Road countries, we should, with the help of ETOs elsewhere, to attract students from the US and Europe through talks and exhibitions. We should be the bridge between China and the rest of the world. In fact, Hong Kong has the geographical and institutional advantage that helps its positioning as a post-secondary education hub. Many universities have relevant global subjects, but Hong Kong should maintain a brand. We should draw reference from the Institute of the Tsinghua Youth University. They would maintain the ratio of students from different countries and they will subsidize their various living costs. From the curriculum, life planning and resource allocation, the students have been provided with tailor-made knowledge so that they are more interested in studying China-related topics and we should do the same to facilitate mainland students studying here doing so so that we can build a bridge between cultures. President I so submit speaking in support of the motion amendments. Dr. Loi Kwong. President I would like to thank Mr Tang Fei for moving the motion and the five members for moving the amendments. The 20th National Congress report says that we must speed up the development of a strong country, a strong educational country. And then President Xi Jinping said it's also important that we do a good job in bringing in and going global. Um, so uh, in bringing in OCC's educational resources also going global. So Hong Kong, the chi though that China will become an influential and important education hub in the world. Now Hong Kong has uh, five tertiary institutes that are among the top 100 in the world. Their um, teaching quality and uh, and research standards uh, have are internationally acclaimed, so we must therefore do what Hong Kong is good at in contributing to what the country needs. And that's why the BPA uh, uh, proposed, uh, suggests the government to formulate a, a comprehensive blueprint to provide various uh, education facilities and strategies. And then we must turn Hong Kong into an international education hub. The 14 five year plan supports Hong Kong's uh, development into eight centers. That is the International Financial Center, International Innovation and Technology Center, East Miss uh, West International Cultural Exchange Center, International Trade Center, International Maritime Center, International Aviation Hub, International um, or Asia Pacific um, Regional um, um, Arbitration Mediation Center, and so on. So we need um, human resources uh, to promote the development of the eight centers. That's they are crucial. So the government needs to compete. Uh, um, more forcefully on the talents at the same time the government must uh, train talents in Hong Kong we need to you need to start this next round of manpower projection as soon as possible there is need to do big data analysis on manpower demands so that there could be more uh, precise uh, strategies uh, for manpower development in the near medium and long term now there are two main focus first the, we must uh, make the most of our international education scene uh, to bring in overseas resources and go global. In the 2023 uh, policy address, the chief executive announced that in the 2024-25 school year, academic year, 
the um, subsidy for non-local students will be increased by 40% for lo um, tertiary institutes. There will be an additional $1 billion uh, for injection into a fund to bring more talents to Hong Kong for study and for conducting research. And then 100 uh, top uh, students will be um, given subsidy to study overseas. The the government will, is also committed to developing the northern metropolis uh, university town, and then there will be more co uh, more cooperations and courage between local and overseas tertiary institutes. Now we must learn from previous experiences of other places. Now for the Cervantes uh, SDAD of USA. Uh, it came to Hong Kong to start a, the Cervantes uh, College, uh, Hong Kong branch, but then uh, it ran at a loss, so it uh, closed down in 2022. So we must learn from this bitter experience. There must be better policy support to bring uh, renowned uh, overseas institutes to come to Hong Kong to set up co colleges or to encourage them to um, start um, dual degree programs with local institutes. And then from a preschool to uh, tertiary education, the system must be improved. At the uh, primary and secondary level, there is a need to uh, promote further STEAM education. And there must be more subsidy for practical sessions of uh, INT. So students will receive INT training early on. And there is a need to uh, enhance the um, recognition of uh, tertiary institutes in Hong Kong. And um, the, uh, these, um, the, there's a de the Dehine Institute must, uh, uh, should uh, be upgraded to a University of um, Applied Sci uh, Sciences. And then um, there must also be uh, better bridging over with uh, local ter tertiary courses. I'm glad to see that the chief executive has announced that for primary and secondary schools, the government will be further promoting STEAM education. There will be primary school subjects on science. There will, the government will also promote the establishment of universities of applied sciences. The government must also um, talk, uh, um, promote a mutual recognition of uh, UAS certificates. So please stop, uh, Mr. Tong Li Chair. Thank you, President. For primary and secondary education and uh, uh, schools and for some uh, tertiary institutes, um, some may have strong views on their governance. But then in terms of academic and research standards, um, uh, the, the schools and institutes uh, have a good reputation. And, uh, Local universities, they have a number of uh, overseas students, but then compared to other uh, universities in Europe and North America, uh, it seems that uh, local universities are not doing as much in industrialization. Actually, they could uh, be uh, more proactive on three fronts. Now, the uh, some things that the ASIA government is giving uh, adequate subsidy to local universities. Uh, so the university need not compete for talents outside of Hong Kong. But then we are seeing a drop in the student population, and there are also more overseas study choices. So local universities need to change their mindset. They're thinking that um, there is no shortage of students. Now, it's not just about helping the universities. More importantly, we need to help Hong Kong and the country to bring in talents from different parts of the world. Now, after some of the students finish their studies, they may then go on to contribute to the development of the country and Hong Kong. Maybe at the end, they choose to leave. Uh, they won't stay and work here in Hong Kong, but um, from their first-hand uh, learning experience and living experience here, they will know exactly what the SAR is like. They also will learn about the development of our country. They will learn about our culture and uh, values. And also friendships would have been built with uh, local students. So that's the best way actually to tell good stories of Hong Kong and China. Now, um, 
in Europe and America, local governments may support universities to attract overseas students. This is to bring in talents as well as some um, forex uh, revenue. At the same time, is to uh, help young people overseas learn about the country's culture and values. It's a kind of education diplomacy. So local universities need to do more in this respect. And in terms of uh, policies or systems such as immigration and work arrangement, the government needs to give support as well so that we can bring in students from overseas and in turn we'll get talents. Now five members have proposed amendments, three of them mention there's a need for Hong Kong to enhance VPAT education. In particular, we need to uh, speed up the establishment of universities of applied sciences so that VPAT students may eventually gain university degrees. And so there's a need to uh, g gain recognition of the VPAT qualifications. And we need to also strengthen uh, craftsmanship training for local students. That's something I've always been advocating. Now, we are short of manpower, not only at the high end involving um, financial talents or other high end talents. We also have a shortage of frontline workers and craftsmen. Now, many parents want their children to go to universities. They want them to take up um, popular subjects, and best if they could get a master degree or even a PhD degree. But then, not all young people are uh, um, geared to for towards um, uh, academic studies. Some may pre may have interest in uh, design, cooking, and so on. So they could still make a good career out of their interest and contribute to society. So our education system should be one that will uh, train masters in all trade. Everyone will be a master of a trade of interest to them. doesn't matter what subjects they study. Um, and for those who don't do well at DSE, but then they want to um, learn and make a good career, we must offer them more pathways. So I speak in support of the original motion and the uh, amendments. Mr. Chi Kwok Kang. Thank you, President. I'd like to thank Mr. Tang Fei for moving the original motion and the five members for moving the amendments. The country is trying to develop itself into a strong uh, education country. Now, President Xi said in May last year that uh, there's need to improve the strategy of education, open up and put uh, great uh, equal emphasis on introducing overseas education, no red resources going global. Now, we are an international education hub. We have age universities and the Diploma of Secondary Education uh, exam, the DSE, uh, is also recognized uh, well outside of Hong Kong. Now, whether we bring in overseas resources going global, the government uh, is rather passive in this respect. Now, uh, when we do publicity overseas, we shouldn't just be attracting enterprises and uh, capital. More importantly, we need to attract enterprises and talents. In the past, uh, universities have to work on their own to bring in talents. There is no support and coordination from the government. I believe the uh, economic and trade offices overseas ETOs as well as mainland ETOs, they should all play an important role in publicizing the advantages of our education system. In particular, uh, the focus should be on the Belt and Road countries and um, ASEAN countries so we could bring in talents and we could also promote um, exchanges of talents. Many members said in the mentioned um, VPAT in their amendments, I uh, am all in agreement. Now, of course, if we want to promote VPAT, uh, we need to have um, um, accreditation of the professional qualifications and they need to gain overseas recognition. Now, uh, students' qualifications must be recognized where they want to go to work outside of Hong Kong, whether it be in the mainland or overseas. Otherwise, uh, there will be no interest in taking up such uh, pro programs. Now, the, there's a need for government uh, to take the lead in uh, gaining rec uh, accreditation of qualifications. Now, we need, uh, as we uh, promote further mutual recognition of qualifications with the, with the mainland, we 
must also seize upon the opportunities of the country developing into a strong education country. Uh, there is a need to, uh, to promote further mutual recognition of qualifications for other places. And then the VPAT uh, will play a more uh, proactive role in our education system. Now, bringing in education resources and going global is uh, not just about higher education. Uh, for foundation education is equally important. DSE uh, uh, needs to have uh, international recognition, and then, uh, in fact, they already the DSE already has international recognition, so students can apply for um, overseas universities. And the um, uh, my union and another association published a survey survey uh, finding yes last October. There are parents who want to send their children here to Hong Kong. Um, 39.7% and 27.5% of the parents want to send their children to government schools or uh, sub aided schools uh, or, or direct subsidy schools. Uh, and then 63% um, want their children to take DSE, which is five times more than those who want their children to take IB courses. And for uh, um, these students, uh, if they just go to government uh, aided schools or the direct subsidy schools, uh, they will still get enjoy subsidy from government. So the government uh, is competing for talent uh, by giving such subsidy. Uh, and these are children of um, talents admitted to Hong Kong. Now, um, there are many s cities that are now doing uh, uh, providing DSE. Uh, courses for children, for students. Um, so these are st uh, schools for Hong Kong children on the main in the mainland. So in future, there will be need to set up examination centers in the mainland. But then uh, it's just been announced that uh, for this um, the upcoming DSE, there won't be any examination centers in the mainland. So this is a challenge about uh, our education system going global. Uh, um, well, actually, uh, we need to do more in uh, developing the IDSC uh, open exam so we could um, uh, compete uh, with talents um, with other places in ACN and so on. Now, the government should be doing that, but it's not at all keen. And Mr. Bill Tang, thank you, President. I thank Mr. Tang Fei for his motion. If you look at the wording of the motion, it mentions an international education hub. It doesn't necessarily mean university, but we are concerned about the about how open our university community is. We have to attract students from the Western countries, Asian countries, Middle East countries to come. Our universities are of high ranking in various surveys. But I think what attracted these students to come is that they can understand the life in our country, in Hong Kong, and use Hong Kong as a springboard to have access to the mainland market. Now, besides the world rankings of our universities, Non-mainland students can have a taste of an international educational environment in Hong Kong. So how we can combine the streams and extractions on these fronts? We have to ensure that there is a healthy mix of local, non-local and mainland students. Guidelines should be set for various universities or at least different disciplines on what a healthy mix of students is. Or maybe there should be 30% um, of local students, 30% non-local students, and 30% mainland students to make sure that universities are really a melting pot of talents. Second, we have a lot of prominent scholars and entrepreneurs telling us that in Hong Kong, we have a lot of marvelous researchers, but there is a lack of application scenarios.
Why can't we learn from Singapore? It is a small country with a small population and a lack of application scenarios. That's why they conduct tests for their products, for the research products in the mainland and other places. Our research products can be tested out in the industrial zones in the mainland. There can be collaboration. Cooperation agreements can be signed with other mainland cities. This will encourage a group of prominent scholars and researchers to stay in Hong Kong because otherwise they would all move to the mainland because there are more application scenarios. There should be organic interplay between the industries and the academia. Three, we have to have universities dedicated to industries. We have the Hang Seng University, yes, but we have to encourage world-renowned industrial universities to set up shop in Hong Kong. Maybe that can be a new direction for developing Hong Kong into an international education hub. There is a consensus that we have to attract more non-local students to come. Of course, we don't give them direct subsidy, but we have to sort out their accommodation issues. We have to give them job opportunities as well. We need more than hostel accommodations. There should be larger communities welcoming these students. These communities can be set up in Changguano and Dongchong. Last but not least, let me share my takeaway from my experience as a CU HK Council member. We will have a new president. I told reporters that we want to maintain a good tradition that the president should be a Chinese prominent scholar with top-notch research ability who can lead this UHK to scale new highs in the international community. Now, I urge any prominent scholars who would like to contribute to the de development of CUHK to consider this position. Mr. K uh, Dr. Johnny Ng, President, I speak in support of the motion and the amendments. President C mentioned on various platforms the importance of education. When education thrives, the country can thrive. On the 1st of July, important speech, President Xi said that we have to tap our advantage and leverage on our good educational foundation and make ourselves a regional education hub, attracting mainland and overseas students to study in Hong Kong and provide job opportunities for them to stay in Hong Kong so that they can contribute to the enrichment of our talent pool. Our VPAS education is highly internationalized and diversified. We are the only city with five top eight uh, world-ranking universities in the world. Now we can enrich the horizon of students. We can also export our education services and help our education sector to upgrade. Now we have the aging population and a shortage of labor. By attracting more non-local students to Hong Kong, we can alleviate these problems. Now these are my suggestions. For the above purpose, especially for attracting Belt and Road Country students and mainland students to Hong Kong, the government will relax the non-local student quotas of the eight UGC-funded universities from 20% to 40%. The number of non-local students will be doubled from 3,000 to 6,000 for each university. Now, starting in the same year, the government will increase the quota places for G for Belt and Road Scholarship uh, by 100%, and I think the government can even increase the quota more. Now, by providing students with an international community, we can enhance the prospects of non-local students in Hong Kong. Now, non-local graduates can stay for a maximum of 24 months to seek job. Now, the 
immigration arrangements for non-local graduates has been well received seeing its implementation. We should extend the duration of stay for non-local graduates and give them more support. For example, job matching to help them find a job in Hong Kong or even give them accommodation subsidies. We should also provide support for non-local students to come to study in Hong Kong in terms of visa facilitation, which should extend the scheme to high, higher diploma programs as well. I support the idea of building the northern metropolis into a university town. This can tie in with our bid to build an international education hub in Hong Kong. We should provide a collaboration platform for the research community as well as international players so that there can be synergy between the academia and the industry. Through the development of the Northern Metropolis University Town, we can encourage collaboration between research institutes and the industry. By creating a cluster of research institutes and industries, we can attract more multinational corporations to set up a branch in Hong Kong. We should also enhance the exposure of Hong Kong and mainland students in terms of the development of various industries. By developing Hong Kong into an international education hub, we can enhance Hong Kong's attractiveness for non-local graduates. We can also establish a brand of education in Hong Kong. This will also enrich the government's coffer and boost our economy. This is good for our economic development impetus and will help us contribute to the nation's growth. Thank you. Mr. Dari Lee, President, I thank Mr. Tang Fei for moving this motion. I fully support Hong Kong's development into an international education hub. The reasons for supporting the motion have been covered by many members. We have to work with the country to in building China into a leading country in education. By developing Hong Kong into an international education hub, we can have a bigger play in telling good stories of the nation and Hong Kong. Third, this will help us break away from the previous mindset where students would choose Europe European countries and the U.S. as places uh, for study. So why not Hong Kong? We do enjoy a number of strengths. We have a lot of quality post-secondary education institutions. This is no small feat for a small city like us. We lack talents in our aid center positioning and we face an aging population. We need more talents from outside Hong Kong to bolster our labor force. In the new policy address, the chief executive has announced a series of policies to build Hong Kong into an international education hub. When an official announced developing Hong Kong into an international education hub, that is Mr. Donald Zhang, there was a lot of controversy. A parents told me, if we import so many non-local students, the local students will face a lot of competition in the future. Now, this is a good policy, but we have to prevent a discord in society because of this policy. First, we cannot allow, we cannot let parents and students think that, that non-local students are taking away resources from local students. I know the government has emphasized this many times, but that's not what the parents think. Now, the 40% of students, non-local students can enroll in UGC funded universities. For the remaining 60%, they have to pursue education elsewhere overseas or
enroll in higher diploma courses or sub-degree courses. Simultaneously, when we attract non-local students to come, we have to enhance the support for local students so that with our support, local students can enroll in degree programs and repat degree programs to contribute to the developments of Hong Kong. We have also we must also pay attention to the operational details of this policy. We are doubling the quota from twenty percent to forty percent. A number of issues will arise accommodation, teaching resources, and the teaching arrangement. The Education Bureau and the universities themselves have to pay attention to the reality. This is a good policy which we need, but we must not be bogged down by the operational details. Otherwise, it would give rise to conflicts and disputes. Now, we need talents for industries, but we can't overly focus on an industry-driven approach. We should instead make Hong Kong a base for talent nurture. You have to support the policy with statistics. You have to prove to us that the group of non-local graduates would stay in Hong Kong, would remain in Hong Kong after graduation, or at least have a bigger percentage of these non-local graduates to stay in Hong Kong. The reality is not many of them do stay in Hong Kong. So you have to work harder and make sure that, that they will stay and contribute to our development. If you can convince people with statistics, there will be wider support for your policy. And people will appreciate the importance of non-local graduates' contribution to Hong Kong. So please be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Please stop your speech. Next, Mr. Chen Hong Fong. Thank you, President. In last year's university rankings, five of Hong Kong's universities become top eight. I would like to thank Mr. Tang Fei for moving this motion so that we can talk about how to develop Hong Kong into a post-secondary education hub. Now, with the Comprehensive Strategic Development Blueprint, we would need to make sure we have resources as well as talents. We also need to make sure our R&D outcomes can go global, and thus it will become a proof of the Hong Kong education brand. From the figures of the Ministry of Education, in the past 40 years, 8 million people of China have studied overseas. They mainly went to the UK, Canada, Australia, and so on, the 5i countries. But due to violence incidents, the number of students studying overseas has decreased. I think this is a good opportunity for us. Hong Kong should leverage on its advantages to attract more research post graduates so that we have a bigger talent pool. We should also try to attract top-notch academics to come research in Hong Kong. I think we have a great opportunity right now. In 2018, Donald Trump has implemented measures that hasten the progress of scholars trying to go back to China. And it is said that in between 2016 and 2021, Chinese academics returning from U.S. has been steadily increasing from 900 or to 2,000 odd people. So Hong Kong should really try to attract these top-notch academics to make Hong Kong home. We should extend an olive branch. We should take the initiative. 
we shouldn't let universities take the first step. Right now, I was told by a university academic that in the HKUST that academics don't really want to work in Hong Kong. It is due to conditions of employment for Hong Kong universities are much lower than those offered by mainland universities. In 2022, the Tsinghua University has 36 odd billion dollars in budget given to them. But right now, for all universities in Hong Kong, we have $36 billion. We should really have more resource for R&D expenditure. In order to develop Hong Kong into the regional post-secondary education hub, it is important to think about R&D and the research patents in the Greater Bay Area has far exceeded those applied in other regions. We have a great reputation and the Bay Area has its advantages in research and development. If Hong Kong can complement the advantages of other Bay Area cities, we can definitely do more. In the 80s and 90s, many foreigners would come to Hong Kong to make contributions. We should welcome people from various places to study and work here in order to develop Hong Kong into a post-secondary education hub. I so submit, Mr. Benson, look. Thank you, President. I thank Mr. Tang Fei for moving the motion. I also thank the other members for moving the relevant amendments. In May 2023, the fifth group study session on the on education in China has been held. General Secretary C said that we should introduce overseas education resources and go global and put to good use world-class educational resources and innovative vectors to make Hong China an influential and important education hub in the world, promote the brand of study in China, and make sure the country's education is more influential and have a greater say in the world. The government is, and Hong Kong in general is a bridge between China and the world. In the 2023 policy address, it was said that Hong Kong should be developed into a post-secondary education hub. There is the increase of non-local student quota and the increase in scholarship places to attract more talents and non-local students to study in Hong Kong. In order to become a regional post-secondary education hub, I have three suggestions to make. Regarding institutional collaboration and recruitment of students, the government is not playing a key role at the moment. With the attraction of foreign students, the university would be taking a key role in the promotion and recruitment. I suggest promoting institutional collaboration and we sh can perhaps arrange joint tours made by university representatives overseas to recruit students so that we can recruit more students in more regions to achieve our target. We should also focus on attracting students from Belt and Road countries. 
we can perhaps set up booths in exhibitions for mainland universities. We can also implement credit recognition arrangements or transfer arrangements with overseas universities to attract more overseas students to study in Hong Kong. Regarding the quality and scale of teaching of institutions, we really need to maintain teaching quality. From a UGC study in 2022 and 2023, the teacher-student ratio is approximately 1 to 12. And in other top overseas universities, it's usually 1 to 5 or 1 to 6. So we should maintain the ratio of student to teacher to students. We should also try to maintain stability in teaching quality. We should perhaps attract mainland scholars and talents to be tutors and lecturers in Hong Kong universities. Ms. Professor Lao Chi Peng. Thank you, President. I support Mr. Tang Fei's motion and the amendments made by other members. In May and November of 2023, in the relevant group study sessions or other occasions, President Xi has made several points about education in China. We should promote the brand of study in China we should make sure the country's education is more influential and has a greater say in the world. In the past decade or so, the economy has opened up and we have really made great tides in research and development. The number of papers published of China ranks first in the world. Many advanced technologies of China are leading. They have created the foundation for the development of soft powers in China. We have an advantage in developing into a post-education hub. In the 2023 policy address it says so specifically that we should make Hong Kong into an education hub as well as a talent cluster. In 24-25 academic year, the number of non-local student quota will double from 20% to 40%. The institutions can progressively attract more mainland and overseas students to study in Hong Kong. The UGC will fund universities to create more hostel places. The target is that an additional 13,500 hostel places should be created to accommodate the additional non-local student intake. We will soon have a new round of land grant scheme and funding scheme to support self-financing institutions. Hong Kong is one of the leading Bay Area cities. We have the advantages of acting as a bridge between China and the world. We should seize the opportunities brought about by the Northern Metropolis development to attract more overseas and mainland students and academics to promote institutional collaboration and the development of the country into a leading country in education. We should keep pace with the times
and promote diversified development. With Hong Kong's measures to attract overseas talents and investors, we have been doing well, but we are also faced with challenges. Some talents found it hard to arrange for their children to go to good schools. The good public and private schools often do not have sufficient places to accommodate them. We have schools that offer IB programs. We have enough places for them, but we do not have enough places for the schools offering other curriculum. Or curricula. We should promote diversified development of international schools so as to make sure Hong Kong is a comprehensive education hub. President, I so submit to speak in support of the motion and the amendments. If I may remind members, in accordance with the House rules, this debate must end by 5.39 at the latest today. So at around 5.13, I will call upon the mover to speak on the amendments and then we will deal with the rest of the procedures for the uh, debate. Mr. Gary Cheng. Thank you, President. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Tang Fei for his motion and the other members for their amendments. Higher education is the pride of Hong Kong. In the latest uh, QS ranking in 2024, five universities in Hong Kong remain among the top uh, 100 in the world and top 30 in Asia. Now, Hong Kong is the gateway of Hong the mainland to uh, the outside world. We have uh, we um, free we speak three languages, and then uh, we are able to keep um, to our Chinese culture and customs. At the same time, we keep close links with the rest of the world. So uh, we have uh, the advantage in attracting talents. Now we want to develop Hong Kong further into an international education hub, and then. Uh, uh, in turn, we could enhance the influence of our education system as well as the system of the mainland. Now, and then, in terms of the education system and culture and so on, there are differences between Hong Kong and the mainland. Uh, some uh, is because of historic reasons or for other re institutional reasons. But uh, it's because of the such differences. There are many students outside of Hong Kong uh, who will take this into account when they uh, consider studying overseas. So when we consider building the uh, study in China brand, uh, we shouldn't just uh, duplicate what's um, taking place in the mainland. Instead, we should uh, leverage on our own model and helping to build the study in China brand. Now with higher education, Academic um, freedom and um, institutional autonomy are considered the cornerstones of universities. Uh, and that's the advantage of our higher education. It's also uh, appealing to uh, overseas academics and students. So academic freedom and institutional autonomy are part of the core values of our education system. So in future, and we want to build the Hong Kong um, education brand, we need to safeguard these values. You can see there are many lessons to be learned around the world. For example, the United States is the strongest in its education system, but now we are seeing cases of uh, political inference in um, academic freedom. So even um, presidents of uh, University of Harvard has to, uh, decided to quit because of um, recent political controversies. And also um, non-American students are treated unfairly. It's more than just about the reputation of an individual university. It's also about um, the confidence of other places in the country as a whole. Uh, if the students want to go there and study. So in Hong Kong, we need to uh, be, uh, you know, um, be alert to that. Now, we have many non-local students in Hong Kong, but most of them are really from the mainland.
That's why in the past there were criticisms that uh, the so-called internationalization of our education system is really just mainlandization. Now, we, if we want to become an international education hub, um, while we keep our close links to the mainland, we also need to and uh, promote um, academic exchanges with um, the rest of the world. So Hong Kong will truly become an international education hub, so I speak. Mr. Robert Lee. Thank you, President. I speak in support of Mr. Tang Fei's motion and the amendments of the five members. Uh, we want to um, promote Hong Kong as an international education hub. We also want to build the Study in China brand. The IMF uh, announced that uh, uh, for the purchasing power after discounting G uh, GDP and so on, in, in fact, in 2016, China already surpassed uh, the United States. And by in 2023, China surpassed the U.S. by some 20%. And also, uh, Chinese influence is growing in various um, aspects, such as national defense and so on. So we need to let students see the achievements of the country. Uh, they, we need to let students see the, the scale of the development going on in the mainland, and then people, people will be encouraged to go and study uh, in the mainland. First, our focus should be on uh, Belt and Road country students. We, and we are, Hong Kong is a place where uh, East meets West, so that's our advantage. And so people could adapt better uh, if they come here, as they try to learn about Chinese culture. And then um, uh, on Belt and Road countries, there are many investments and construction going on. If people choose to study in the mainland, and when they, graduate, when they graduate, they can choose to stay on in China to work or go back to their own country. Still, they will serve as a good bridge to uh, promote um, uh, um, ties between the country and China. Now. There are many students uh, um, who can benefit from various incentives to bring them here, uh, um, such as the increase in hostel places and more subsidy and, and quota places and so on. But then for uh, countries that are strong in um, attracting overseas students, such as uh, the US, uh, Australia, the UK, the uh, incentives are relatively uh, fewer. And for Belt and Road countries, if the students come to Hong Kong to study, one reason is because they want to learn more about China through Hong Kong. So that means they have to learn Chinese. Uh, our Chinese uh, education is really for students with uh, Chinese as their mother tongue. So uh, that's why there is the need to set up language centers in tertiary institutes. So there will be uh, Chinese uh, language courses for students uh, with Chinese as a second language. And then eventually they will may have a chance to go and uh, develop a career in the mainland. And then also the second point is uh, there needs to be further collaboration between universities in Hong Kong and in Shenzhen. Now some local universities have set up campuses in the Greater Bay Area. And uh, these higher institutes could design courses for overseas students. For example, in a four-year bachelor degree program, three years uh, uh, courses done in uh, Hong Kong, one year in the GBA. So these students can then learn more about the development opportunities in the mainland, and uh, such courses will be more appealing to overseas students. Third point. Now, the universities uh, have an impact on the on local communities, so there's need for a better collaboration between universities and industries. And uh, we could also seize the bond opportunities of the GBA development, uh, built and road development and on, and there should be more attachment opportunities for university students. This is a way to retain, uh, attract and retain talents. Um, for overseas students, their visas, uh, um, should allow them to work part time. It will help them to pay their tuition fees at the same time. They they will better integrate into society that way. And then the government must also uh, arrange for a uh, higher uh, education institutes to do education fairs and symposiums in uh, Belt and Road countries, so they could tell people about the advantages of studying in Hong Kong. The uh, Trade Development Council, uh, the uh, ASEAN ETOs should also take the lead in working closely with uh, universities uh, 
uh, to do overseas promotion. Now, uh, we, this is now the best opportunity for Hong Kong to develop into an international education hub. Uh, Hong Kong must learn more about the needs of students from Asian and Belt and Road countries. If they come here to study what they need, so we need to learn about that. And then, um, then we could tell good stories about Hong Kong and China. I still speak in support of the motion. Mr. Perry Yu. President, in the in Mr. Tang's phase motion, uh, he proposes that we need to uh, make the most of our advantages to uh, build Hong Kong to an international hub for post-secondary education and build the study in China brand. I am all for that because that will bring us economic benefits. It will also boost the soft power of the country in Hong Kong. At the same time, we could bring talents from all over the world to Hong Kong. Hong Kong could then become an important hub for training and, re and attracting talents. Now, if Hong Kong wants to become an international education hub, um, uh, we uh, could consider, um, um, you know, um, um, study visits, um, th that as, which is a form of tourism, and it uh, works very well because um, uh, students, primary students, or, or sec senior secondary students could uh, take some time off to, to study elsewhere as a form of tourism. And then they benefit much from that. Now, uh, in Hong Kong, our schools and um, universities have um, a high standard. So if we promote this kind of uh, tourism, it will become a special, uh, a unique tourism product for Hong Kong. Many travel uh, agents uh, are developing such um, itineraries. So um, it's the same for local students. They could also go global through such uh, visits. And then with um, such exchanges, we can bring uh, overseas um, uh, students to Hong Kong as well, and they will learn more about Hong Kong. Uh, Macau is already doing something similar. There, uh, um, in Macau has already started a program on this kind of tourism. There are over some 7,000 places. Well, in Hong Kong, actually, we are even better positioned to um, promote such work. But then uh, the trade tells me that uh, such um, visit, uh, tourism is very popular uh, uh, on the mainland, and many parents on the mainland are keen to send their students here. But then even if there is demand in the mainland market, it's hard to find um, matching uh, kindergartens, primary, secondary schools, or universities in Hong Kong to uh, enter to receive such students. Now, as um, the uh, Education Bureau um, okay, actually could uh, give support, uh, there could be some sort of uh, of uh, support from Education Bureau to promote educational tours. Now, we want to turn Hong Kong into an international education hub because we want to uh, bring in talents. We are short of manpower. And uh, the government may have uh, started um, s important labor on a small scale, but then we need a multi-pronged approach to train talents uh, while we also compete for talents. Now, in uh, Mr. Stanley Ng's and Mr. Um, Frankie Yick's amendments, uh, there's mention of a VPAT education, that is, we need to enhance the recognition of uh, VPAT qualifications and promote uh, uh, such education. I, I agree we should do that. Now, I went to a, a ceremony recently that uh, a group that's uh, to promote VPAT development. It will become a link between Hong Kong and the mainland. And this very it's an important milestone for um, VPAT education. For non-local students, uh, they may choose to stay in Hong Kong or to go back to the mainland to study. Now, in 2021-20, because of the COVID, the figures were not um, representative. But uh, usually, some 50 to 60 percent of the graduates uh, choose to stay in Hong Kong. Is uh, So, it, um, the VPAT Education involves the Education Bureau, the Labor and Welfare Bureau, and many other organizations and institutes. I hope the uh, LWB will review this uh, uh, scheme for VPAT graduates to stay and work in Hong Kong.
Um, and then uh, the Bureau must also uh, talk to the trade to expand the scope of the curriculum. For Now there is a need to gain um, international accreditation of VPAT um, qualifications. Then we'll be able to train enough uh, manpower uh, at, um, uh, at the VPAT level. Thank you. Mr. Tommy Chang. Deputy President, today's motion is on actively building Hong Kong into an international education hub by formulating a comprehensive strategic development blueprint for Hong Kong's education by providing a wider range of education services, we can leverage our strength to contribute to the country's development. This will maintain and consolidate our international competitiveness and enhance our education influence in the world and have a greater say in the international community. In the 2023 policy address, the chief executive dedicated a chapter to developing our education system. Now, the first three proposals are the most important ones. These include increasing the admission quota of non-local students to government-funded post-secondary institutions from 20 percent to 40 percent and providing more scholarship schemes to encourage non-local students to come study in Hong Kong. Two, development of Northern, Met Northern Metropolis University Town. And three, enhancing the VPAS status to degree status. To achieve the above goals, we have to take more aggressive actions in attracting mainland and overseas students to study in our post-secondary institutions. Subsidies should be given to attract overseas students to come study in our secondary schools. Now, for students, if they can come to Hong Kong to study sooner, it would facilitate the educational pursuit in Hong Kong, and it will also enhance our talents pool. I think we have the conditions to implement this proposal. According to the Education Bureau statistics, this year the combined wastage of secondary and primary students was 4%. For primary, primary, uh, primary school, it was 4.3%. The total number was 27,000 students. There is an increasing trend of student wastage. But I think this is the prime opportunity to enhance subsidies for non-local students to come study in our secondary schools with accommodation facilities provided. We have a lot of prestigious schools in Hong Kong. If we can replenish the student pool with mainland students, we can ensure the survival of these famous and schools, famous schools with a long history. Now, we should also introduce an education voucher scheme for Hong Kong permanent residents. This will encourage the middle class to bear children. The applicable scope should be extended to all government-funded and privately funded kindergarten, primary schools, and secondary schools. This should include direct subsidy school, international schools, and private secondary and primary schools should also be included. The education voucher scheme will give middle-class families more freedom to choose the schools they want. This will encourage childbearing as well. Now, the government can study packing the amount of subsidies uh, with the education voucher scheme. The scheme should cover non-local mainland students as well. For schools, we have to select schools with accommodation facilities to avoid the need to cross the border for school. Now, in 2023, in May, President Xi mentioned that we have to
enhance the education educational opening up by putting equal emphasis on introducing overseas educational resources and going global, and put to good use world class educational resources and innovative factors so as to make China an influential and important education hub in the world. We have to participate in global education governance and vigorously promote the brand of study in China. Thank you. Mr. Martin Liao, Deputy President, the development of an international education hub rise on a country's soft power and international competitiveness. The 20th National Congress report mentioned that by 2033, that China will become a leading nation in education. Presidency mentioned that we have to actively participate in global education governance and vigorously promote the brand of study in China. Our education system is an integral part of the country's education system. We are one of the cities with the most world-ranking universities in the world. We have the potential and the capability to leverage our strengths to build the country into an education hub. We can also help introduce overseas educational resources and help our students to go global and increase the country's influence in the world. Now, the policy address has accepted G19 logical members' proposals so that starting the 2024 and 25 academic year, the admission quota of non-local students will be doubled to 40 percent. That is equivalent to an increase of quarter number from 3,000 to 6,000 each year. In a bid to becoming an international education hub, we must put equal emphasis on quantity and quality. As early as 2009, the government floated the idea to turn education into an industry because of insufficient land resources and also a reasonable allocation of resources. The plan was put to a halt in 2013. Now we have to refer to the very the ultimate goal of education, that is to nurture talents rather than adopting a utilitarian approach. The future direction for Hong Kong is a talent base. Whether the talents choose to stay in Hong Kong or return to their home country, their educational attainments must be recognized. They must be equipped with necessary skills to make them useful contributors of society and specific industries. We have to enhance the gatekeeping efforts to ensure quality of our post-secondary institutions so that we can build a prominent brand of study in China and Hong Kong. This will create a positive interplay between talent nurturing and economic power. This will enhance the country's soft power and make us better at telling good stories of China and Hong Kong. We can't just buy blindly increase the admission quota of non-local students and attract foreign institutions to offer double degree programs in Hong Kong without monitoring their quality. That would be an irresponsible approach. In the end, Hong Kong will become a degree factory. Once the brand is lost, we will have a hard time rebuilding the trust the international community has in Hong Kong's education system. We have to focus on learning experience as well, or experiential learning. This is more than building hardware. We have to make sure that we have an inclusive ambience in the community. Since we are attracting Belt and Road students to come to Hong Kong, we have to make sure that our schools are inclusive towards students' culture and lifestyle. I support the original motion and the five amendments. Thank you. Mr. Tang Fei, now you may speak on the amendments.
Deputy President. I thank Professor William Wong, Mr. Stanley Ng, Ms. Lillian Kwok, Mr. Frankie Yek, and Dr. Priscilla Lam for their amendments. They have enriched my original motion. I also thank the, all the members who have, spoke, who have spoken on how we can achieve the building of an international education hub. Many members have mentioned the country's soft power in expanding our reach in education and also craftsmanship and VPAT education. Mr. Stanley Ng also mentioned in the process of internationalizing our education system, we should also promote the rich culture, the rich Chinese culture to the world. Dr. Priscilla Leung mentioned promoting our rule of law education and our position as an international mediation center. This is similar to the establishment of the Integrity Academy. Now we are eager to promote Hong Kong and the country's culture to the world through our education system. Rule of law is a brand of Hong Kong. We have to impress the world with this. Now, members also mentioned VPATS and craftsmanship education. This is of equal importance. When we talk about internationalizing our education system, the focus is usually on post-secondary or secondary education. VPATS receives insufficient mentioning. VPAS is actually a more expeditious way to export our standards and the country's soft power. With our standards, we can train non-local talents to replenish our labor force and exert influence on the region and the world in terms of our standard. This will also shape the economies of the region and the world. As mentioned by the amenders, there must be a mutual accreditation mechanism between our VPAT system and that of other jurisdictions. There must be mutual accreditation for each industry. It is no small feat. The government must engage in a discussion with all the countries in Asia. Now the country has entered into an action plan in terms of peaceful co-development with our neighbors, that is, with a focus on VPAT. Now there are 30 programs where our country and Asian member states will establish a mutual accreditation system. There will be aligned standards to ensure long-lasting collaboration in VPAT education. We should learn from this. Deputy President, I hope today's motion will serve to urge the government to expedite the development of our post-secondary and VPAT education system and build a study in China Hong Kong brand. Secretary for Education, thank you. Deputy President, I would like to thank again Mr. Tang Fei for moving the motion and the other members for moving the amendments. And regarding what members said about the Chief Executive's policy address in relation to developing Hong Kong into a post secondary education hub and formulate a comprehensive strategic development blueprint for Hong Kong's education. We will consider member suggestions in detail and convey the views of development of talents in other policy areas to other policy bureaus for consideration. Hong Kong is an international metropolis where Chinese and foreign cultures converge and is endowed with unique advantages. We do face our challenges. We need talents. We should leverage on our advantages.
to nurture a new generation of students who have affection for the country and Hong Kong and an international outlook, who have the right language talents and conduct world-class research to provide quality teaching and a solid academic research foundation for the rapid development of the country and to fulfill Hong Kong's positioning and role of meeting what the country needs with Hong Kong's strengths. To align with the goal to make China a leading country in education, the Bureau supports Hong Kong higher education institutions to leverage their overall strengths to contribute to developing the country through science and education and the modernization of the country. The government has done much in promoting, facilitating and encouraging collaboration between Hong Kong and mainland institutions, especially in scientific research collaboration, student exchanges and nurturing of talents. Close liaison has been maintained as at November 2020. Two, there are a total of 2,320 ongoing academic research collaboration projects. So far, six Hong Kong tertiary institutions have set up bases or research institutes in Shenzhen, which have further strengthened the collaboration with mainland institutions in scientific research and given full play to Hong Kong's function as an international INT center. In addition, the Bureau has signed education cooperation agreements with a number of mainland provinces and municipalities to provide a cooperation framework for education exchanges, as well as support tertiary institutions in identifying opportunities for institution cooperation. Apart from the higher education institutions that have already settled in the Bay Area, the City University of Hong Kong is also pressing ahead with the preparatory work for its campus in Dongguan. It is believed that upon its official opening, the campus will leverage on its first-class educational resources and strengths to nurture innovative internationalized talents for the country. We also support Hong Kong's institu institutions to capitalize on the characteristics and strengths of Hong Kong's higher education sector through the establishment of multilateral and cross-disciplinary collaborations and create favorable conditions for scientific research and development. The government will continue to actively participate in and promote cooperation in higher education in the Bay Area and seek more innovation collaboration models to promote closer cooperation between institutions and to capitalize on the complementary academic frameworks and facilities and nurture quality talents required for the development of our country. We support the formation of alliances between Hong Kong and mainland universities. Five alliances have been formed so far, namely the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau University Alliance, Beijing Hong Kong University Alliance, Shanghai Hong Kong University Alliance, the Jiangsu Hong Kong Macau University Alliance, as well as the Alliance of Institutions in Shandong Hong Kong and Macau. These alliances bring together more than 80 elite institutions, pulling together high quality teaching and research resources, deepen win win cooperation, and enhance the level and standard of cooperation in the Bay Area. The UGC has been encouraging local universities to make active use of the collaboration of platform of university alliances to provide more exchange opportunities. The UGC has provided a total funding of about $10 million in the 2022-25 triennium to support universities to coordinate and organize academic and exchange activities of the alliances. Regarding the coordination of more double degree programs, apart from the fact that universities have all along been successfully coordinating a number of programs, the UGC 
has issued guidelines to universities encouraging universities to provide students with more opportunities for non-local learning experiences and on the premise that not less than 10 50 percent of the teaching hours of the program will be conducted in hong kong the universities may make use of the grant to meet the demand for the program as for non-local students universities should admit them on an over environment over enrollment basis and charge a tuition fee at least sufficient to recover all additional direct costs. Although institutions have the autonomy to decide whether to offer joint programs, we are taking the lead. Right now, we are at the stage of advancing from stability to prosperity. We should leverage on our unique status and advantages under the one country, two systems to nurture and attract quality talents and developing Hong Kong into an international education hub is an important part of it. Starting from the 2024-25 academic year, we will expand the non-local student quota for the publicly funded post-secondary institutions. The quota will be doubled from 20% to 40%. Taking into account their own circumstances, post-secondary institutions can progressively recruit more students and mainland and Belt and Road country students to study in Hong Kong so that institutions can expand their capacity and enhance the quality of education. The UGC-funded universities will continue to implement various hostel projects with the target of providing a total of about 13,500 additional hostel places by 2027 to accommodate the additional student intake. Regarding scholarship schemes, in the last academic year, the total number of students from the Belt and Road countries from who benefited from the Belt and Road scholarships amounts to approximately 2,500. In future, the UGC will arrange for more tours to be done overseas to attract overseas students to study in Hong Kong. The government will also progressively increase the quota of the Hong Kong PhD Fellowship Scheme to attract more outstanding talents to study and conduct research in Hong Kong. We have enhanced, we want to seize the opportunities. The UGC will reserve approximately $10 million to support Support the Hucom Internationalization Unit and prepare promotional materials. We will con the standing com uh, the unit has been conducting research. In addition, the UGC has been supporting institutions to be more internationalized and diversified, broaden student horizons, improve the quality of local population, create an edge to facilitate Hong Kong's development and showcase Chinese culture and Hong Kong's unique characteristics. In 2023 and 24, the, Unifer the UGC will inject an additional $100 million into the funding scheme for mainland and global engagement and student learning experience to enable the university to provide more exchange and learning opportunities. Universities may use the funding to support local students to participate in learning experiences outside Hong Kong, such as exchange programs, study visits, internships, field trips, trips, and international activities, etc. We institutions can make use of the funding to promote a diversified campus culture and facilitate exchanges between students of different backgrounds and cultures.
the Education Bureau will also subsidize post-secondary students to participate in short-term internships or studies in the mainland to encourage them to gain first-hand understanding of the latest landscape of the country. I thank members' views and suggestions and your support for the Chief Executive's proposal to establish more universities of applied sciences in Hong Kong. We have appointed the HKCA AVQ to establish the criteria for UASs. We will support self-financing post-secondary institutions to develop in that direction and make plans. The Education Bureau has also earmarked startup funding to support potential post-secondary institutions to set up a university alliance in applied sciences for joint promotional activities, cooperation and research in applied education at post-secondary level. The alliance is expected to be officially launched this year and we have received quite positive feedback from various institutions. The government is actively implementing a series of measures to improve the progression pathways for FEPET to encourage students to make their own different choices on further studies and employment starting from the 2023-24 academic year. The Diploma of Applied Education program has been launched to offer them an alternative learning pathway. And the Bureau supports the Vocational Training Council VTC in launching a pilot project in three secondary schools, which involves integrating feedback elements into the HKDSE framework so that participating senior secondary students can take VPAT programs concurrently and obtain both the HKDSE certificate and a VPAT diploma issued by the VTC. We are pleased to note that these measures have received very positive responses since their introduction. To tie in with the country's policy to promote high quality development of modern vocational education, the government has been actively responding to and cooperating with the mainland authorities in promoting mutual recognition in sub-degree level qualifications. In November 2023, the Bureau, together with the HKCA, AVQ, VTC, and the Hong Kong Metropolitan University, conducted a study tour to Guangdong Province to learn more about the specific situation and latest development of vocational education in the mainland. With the support of the Bureau, the CAA, VQ has also provided consultancy services to Guangdong Province to support the development of the qualifications framework for lifelong learning in Guangdong, which includes the establishment of a quality assurance mechanism, accreditation standards, and so on. We will continue with the relevant work. We will continue to adopt a multi-pronged approach to support the dual track of traditional academic education and FEPAT. Members uh, have suggested that some subsidies should be given to promote FEPAT and in fact self-financing institutions play a key role in Hong Kong's education system as they are more flexible in the course offering. Self-financing institutions have in recent years recruited more mainland and overseas students to support their operations and in the 2023 policy address it has been announced that a new land grant scheme 
will be offered this year to support the development of self-financing institutions. The Bureau will also implement a series of support measures, including $1.26 billion subsidy scheme to support self-financing institutions institutions to offer courses that are not so popular but are very expensive to offer. We have earmarked $311 million to promote the development. Education is critical to the development of country. Hong Kong has a shortage of talents with a good basis in the Hong Kong educational system. We should leverage on this advantage to develop our education system. We should better integrate development through such development integrate into the development of the country through such development of the education system. We should all work together and leverage on our advantages under the one country, two systems principle. I thank again members for your suggestions and views so that we have a better understanding of how to take our way forward to develop Hong Kong into a post-secondary education hub, I so submit. I now call upon Professor William Wong to move an amendment. President, I move my amendment. I propose the question to you that Professor William Wong's amendment be passed. Those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendments passed. Mr. Stanley Ng, as the preceding am amendment has been passed, you may move your further amendments. President, I move my further amendments. I propose the question to you that Mr. Stanley Ng's further amendment be passed. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Ms. Lillian Kwok, as the preceding Amendments have been passed. You may move your further amendment. President, I move my further amendment. I propose the question to you that Ms. Lillian Kwok's further amendments be passed. Would those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Frankie Yig, as the pre preceding amendments have been passed, you may move your further amendment. President, I move my further am amendments. I propose the question to you that Mr. Frankie Yeek's further amendments be passed. Would those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendments passed. Professor Priscilla Leung, as the preceding amendments have been passed, you may move your further amendments. President, I move my further amendments. I propose the question to you that Professor Priscilla Learns further amendments be passed. Would those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Tang Fei, you still have six seconds to reply, then the debate, debate will come to a close. Mr. Tang Fei, I thank the administration for its proactive reply and I urge members to support my motion. I now put the question to you that Mr. Tang Fei's motion as amended by Professor William Wong, Mr. Sally Ng, Ms. Lillian Kwok, Mr. Frankie Yik, and Professor Priscilla Leung be passed. Would those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. Members' motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Eunice Yong will move a motion on strengthening the joint development of the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. Four members will move a